in the last presentation, we saw the famous little theorem and the conditions for which it must be satisfied. The famous little theorem states that if P is a prime number, and if A is any integer not divisible by P, then A raised to the power P minus 1 must be congruent to 1 in mode P. So the first condition for which this theorem must hold is that P should be a prime number. And the second condition is that A must be an integer which is not divisible by P. But with the Euler's theorem, the conditions are different. P should not be restricted to prime numbers. P should be any positive integer of our choice. And secondly, A and P must be co-prime, meaning that the GCD of A and P must be 1. So the Euler's theorem states that if A and N are two integers that are co-prime to each other, that is if A and N have a GCD of 1, then A raised to the power phi of n must be congruent to 1 in mode n. Where this phi of n is what we call the Euler's totion function, which counts the number of integers between 1 and n minus 1 that are co-prime to n. Let's take for example, if you want to find phi of 10, then we need to count all integers between 1 and 9 that are co-prime to 10. These are the integers between 1 and 9. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We know the GCD of 1 and 9, sorry, 1 and 10 is 1. So 1 and 10 are co-prime. The GCD of 2 and 10 is 2. So 2 and 10 are not co-prime, so we will not count 2. The GCD of 3 and 10 is 1. The GCD of 7 and 10 is also 1, and the GCD of 9 and 10 is also 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 integers that are co-prime to 10. Therefore, we are saying that phi of 10 is equal to 4. What about phi of 1,000? Are we going to also list all numbers between 1 and 999 that are co-prime to 1,000? What about phi of 10,000? Good. So there's a formula that we're supposed to use. We know that phi of n is given by n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times 1 minus 1 over p2 times up to times 1 minus 1 over pr, where these pi's are the prime factors of n. So meaning if you need phi of 1,000, you will need to first of all prime factorize 1,000. And to prime factorize 1,000, we can easily do that. We know 1,000. You can do this. The smallest prime number that divides 1,000 is 2. And 2 divides 1,500 times. 2 divides 500, 250 times. 2 divides 250, 125 times. And 5 divides 125, 25 times. 5 divides 25, 5 times. And 5 divides 5, 1 time. Therefore, 1,000 will be the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 5, which is the same as 2 raised to the power 3 times 5 raised to the power 3. Therefore, the only two prime factors of 1,000 are 2 and 5. And so, 5 of 1,000 will be the same as 1,000 times 1 minus 1 on 2 times 1 minus 1 on 5, which is the same as 1,000 times a half times 4 on 5, which gives us 400. Therefore, we are saying that between 1 and 999, there are exactly 400 numbers that are co-prime to 1,000. Now, let's take the first application of Euler's theorem. Let's find the remainder obtained when 7 raised to the power 222 is divided by 10. If that remainder is x, then we are saying that 7 raised to the power 222 is congruent to 
x in mod 10. But from Euler's theorem, we know that 7 raised to the power 5 of 10 must be congruent to 1 in mod 10. But 10 is the same as 2 times 5. So the only two prime factors of 10 are 2 and 5. And therefore, 5 of 10 will just be 10 times 1 minus 1 on 2 times 1 minus 1 on 5, which is the same as 4. Therefore, we are saying that 7 raised to the power 4 must be congruent to 1 in mode 10. So now we need to find that multiple of 4, which is very close to 222, but less than 222. And that multiple of 4 is 220. So 220 divided by 4 is the same as 55. Therefore, if we raise both sides to the power 55, this is what we're going to obtain. We're going to obtain 7 raised to the power 4, all raised to the power 55, must be congruent to 1 raised to the power 55, mod 10. So this implies that 7 raised to the power 220 must be congruent to 1 in mod 10. And so, if you multiply both sides by 7 raised to the power 2, so as to have 7 raised to the power 222, this is what we're going to obtain. 7 raised to the power 2 times 7 raised to the power 220 must be congruent to 7 raised to the power 2 mod 10. And this implies that 7 raised to the power 222 must be congruent to 49 mod 10. So this implies 7 raised to the power 222 is congruent to, we know 49 mod 10 is the remainder obtained when 49 is divided by 10. And that remainder is 9. So this is congruent to 9 in mod 10. Therefore, the remainder obtained when 7 raised to the power 222 is divided by 10 is equal to 9. That is our x. Whenever we find the remainder obtained, when a number is divided by 10, we are actually looking for the unit digit of that number. So if you take the number, let's say 2456, that is 2456, and we divide this number by 10, the remainder must be 6, which is the unit digit of this number. If you take 29 divided by 10, the remainder must be 9, which is the unit digit of this number. And if you find the remainder when a number is divided by 100, the remainder will actually be the last two digits of that number. So if you divide the number 2456 by 100, the remainder must be 56, which is the last two digits of this number. So in other words, if they want you to find the remainder obtained when a number is divided by 10, you may just be asked to find the unit digit of the number. So you may be asked to find the unit digit of 7 raised to the power 222 which is actually the remainder obtained when that number is divided by 10. And that remainder is 9. So let's take the second example. Let's find the last two digits of the number 3 raised to the power 1965. That is 3 raised to the power 1965. We are looking for the last two digits of this number. That is, we are looking for the remainder obtained when this number is divided by 100. So let's call that number x. So we are saying that 3 raised to the power 1965, that is 1965, must be congruent to x in mode 100. But from Euler's theorem, we know that 3 raised to the power 5 of 100 must be congruent to 1 in mode 100. But 5 of 100 is the same as 100 times, we know that the only two prime factors of 100 are 2 and 5. Therefore, 5 of 100 will be 100 times 1 minus 1 on 2 times 1 minus 1 on 5. So this is the same as 100 times a half 
times 4 on 5, which is the same as 40. Therefore, we are saying that 3 raised to the power 40 must be congruent to 1 in mode 100. Now, we need to find that multiple of 40, which is very close to 1,965, but less than 1,965. And we know that that multiple of 40 is 1,960. And the 1,960 divided by 40 is exactly the same as 49. Therefore, we need to raise both sides to the power of 49. That is, 3 raised to the power 40 or raised to the power 49 must be congruent to 1 raised to the power 49 mod 100. So this implies that 3 raised to the power 1960, which is congruent to 1 raised to the power 49, is just 1 mod 100. Good. So this power is 1960, but we need to have the power 1965. So we need to multiply both sides by 3 raised to the power 5. That is 3 raised to the power 5 times 3 raised to the power 1960 must be congruent to 3 raised to the power 5 times 1 in mode 100. So this implies that 3 raised to the power 1965 must be congruent to we know that 3 raised to the power 5 is the same as 243 mod 100, which is congruent to 43 mod 100. That is, if you divide 243 by 100, the remainder will be 43. Therefore, the last two digits of the number 3 raised to the power 1965 is actually 43, is the number 43. Good. So this is a very important application of Euler's theorem. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.